right, welcome back everyone. Glad you could join us. So yeah, snowy day today here in Southern Alberta and uh, we thought we would do an indoor project. So for quite a while already, we've been enjoying the birds and uh, feeding them on a regular basis and enjoying that as entertainment. And uh, Mrs. From the Woods wanted a larger uh, fly-through bird feeder. So of course, uh, go big or go home, we have made a heavy duty fly-through bird feeder for Mrs. From the Woods. So uh, glad you could join us. We hope that you enjoy this video and uh, we'll show you what we did. So let's get started. All right, so this is uh, one of two of vintage milk cans that we have and uh, we decided that we wanted to make a heavy duty bird feeder. This is from the woods has always wanted to have a fly through bird feeder. We have a lot of bird feeders that are small and attract one or two birds at a time but we thought maybe we would build something a little bit bigger and uh, the idea behind this one is we're going to uh, cut the sides off of this vintage milk can uh, on four openings and turn it into a, a large fly through bird feeder. Now it is rather heavy, so we're going to suspend it from a tree with a heavy duty shelf bracket and uh, we're hoping that that works and uh, we're going to figure out some dimensions and start uh, laying out where we're going to cut the openings. Okay, so I have a few of these heavy duty shelf brackets uh, left over from another project. I had to buy a whole box, that's the way they were sold, at least from the wholesaler. And I uh, have a couple left over, so we thought that we would turn that into the hanging bracket, which we will bolt to the tree for the fly-through bird feeder. All right, well, this is our uh, new mouse patrol. And uh, you know the mouse patrol never sleeps. If you can tell me what song that's from and what artist sang that song, write it in the comments below. Well, this is my idea for the fly-through bird feeder. We take a vintage uh, milk can and uh, we're going to cut some openings on the side. So we've determined that the circumference of the entire can at about uh, the bottom here is about 41 inches. Now uh, we would like to have four openings and I'm thinking that the column should be in and around uh, two inches wide. You can make them whatever you want, but uh, if you want five openings, then you have to do the math a bit different. But uh, for four openings, it's circumference, which is 41, less the columns, which we've determined to be two inches. So you have to times that by the number of columns you want. So if you have four openings, there's four columns. And uh, then you would times that by four, you get eight inches. So 41 less eight divided by the four openings that you want gives you a measurement of eight and a quarter. So uh, the total height that we're going to do is from the top of the bottom metal band to uh, the top metal band is about 11 and a half inches. So we thought that maybe nine inches was a good opening. So we're going to make a template uh, that is what our arch or our opening is going to be and uh, we'll transfer that to the can. So for our template, for the openings that we want to cut onto the side of the milk can, uh, again, we did determine that the math ended up being eight and a quarter inches wide, nine inches tall, and we're just going to do a simple arch on the top. So it's a radius of half of the width, of course, so that's four and an eight. And I just have, happen to have a little trammel here that I did that, but you can do it with a compass or if you find a big enough paint can or something like that that you like. Uh, you can do that as well, or even hand draw it. So um, we're going to cut this out, a pair of scissors, and then we'll start laying it out on the can. So we've uh, placed our template onto the side of the milk can, and uh, there's a metal band here that we're going to use as a uh, kind of a reference for all of our openings. And uh, the bottom of the milk can actually is a, about an inch below the top of that edge. So we have a nice place to put all of our seed. And uh, uh, that's the idea at any rate. Um, so we're going to place this. We're going to mark it with a black Sharpie. And uh, then we'll move it over two inches and uh, trace it again and so on and so forth. And hopefully we end up with two inches on the opposing side. So let's see if that works.
Well, uh, the black Sharpie uh, didn't uh, show up very well on the black background. So I happen to have a silver one and I retraced everything and I shifted everything over to make the columns equal. But you can kind of see the difference between uh, the black and the white there just down the center. But now we're going to proceed to cut out those openings. Now I'm hoping that this metal is soft enough we can use a bimetal blade and a jigsaw. We'll try that first, otherwise we'll uh, have to resort to the grinder. Well, cutting on round objects is always uh, a bit of a challenge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two supports on either side just to support it so it doesn't roll away on me when I'm cutting. And uh, then we'll drill a hole and try the jigsaw first. I just used a metal cutting blade in my uh, jigsaw. Now, a word of caution, it spits out an awful lot of little hot little bits of metal, so I would uh, strongly recommend wearing eye protection and hearing protection and keeping your mouth closed. Uh, at any rate, I think the results are nice. I uh, could have maybe brought the arches up a little bit higher, but uh, overall I'm happy with that result. So the next step is we're gonna fasten the lid to uh, the carcass of the milk can so that we can uh, run the ready rod through this, this little handle and then hang it from the bracket. So for fastening uh, the lid to the carcass, we're gonna use some self-tapping metal screws. They're 10 by 3 quarter. Now, you could probably use a regular screw if you pilot it, but these are self-tapping. And uh, you have to use a hex head driver to, to do that, so we'll do that next. Well, now we're uh, getting to the point where we're going to uh, attach the ready rod to the bracket. Now I have half inch ready rod or threaded rod and I have to drill that one little hole there, a little bit bigger to accept the rod. And then on the top here, somewhere in the center, we're going to try and approximate the center so it hangs half decent. We're going to drill a half inch hole as well and then put the ready rod through the handle. And uh, then we're almost at a point where we're just going to quickly sand the edges to give it a bit of a a softer feel on the edges so that the birds don't hurt their feet and uh, catch themselves on the edge and then we have to drill a couple of holes for drainage and then I think we're almost ready to put it up on the tree. Hey, well that uh, concludes today's video. We hope that you enjoyed it. Say we made a heavy duty bird feeder, a fly through bird feeder for Mrs. From the Woods out of a vintage milk can. Uh, I think it looks really great uh, hanging in the tree. We'll try and get some pictures of some birds on there. Uh, the light's starting to fail for the day. Yeah, it's getting darker earlier and earlier, isn't it? But that's fall and winter for you. Uh, but anyway, we had a lot of fun. We hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, we would love it if you would subscribe, like and share, and join us again for another video coming soon. Thanks for watching.